Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Welcome to Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. Uh, welcome to Rick's Corner. I have a guest today that Rich Pian and I have talked about called the Mystery Man. Everybody wants to know who the Mystery Man is because Rich has always built you up to have the biggest arms he's ever seen and, and, and we all know this and everybody wants to know who you were. So it's my pleasure to welcome Dave Haft here. And Dave and I have, we've known each other for a long, long time. Long Before time. you were married. Four, yeah. yeah, long time, like 30 years. And you, you were um, quite heavier two years ago. Bigger. Yes. Yeah. And then you had surgery and you've lost some weight. But but the thing is, is with your training and, and what people want to know, you were, what, 260 about then? About 265. What do you weigh now? Uh, 220. That's a big drop. Yeah. But you always had huge triceps. Yes. And and, and so Rich and I were talking about what you I always saw you doing like weird things like little push-ups like this and exercises that aren't normally used in gyms. You kind of had your own right. thing you did. Isometrics. Why? Why is that? What did it do? Uh, what it did was it force pumped the blood in. Yeah. Um, you know, with the with the weights you tear the muscle, and with the isometrics you pump the blood in. Okay. You're never going to get that kind of a pump unless you lean down and do a hundred of them, and really, really pump the arm. And it started actually in Beverly Hills High. Okay. A guy walked in and he had back arms that popped out like this, but he was really lean. He had a Conan build. He didn't have a weightlifter build. And I thought, man, this guy looks like a fighter. Looked like the Frank Frazetta paintings. And I yeah. thought, I want back arms like that. So uh, as a kid, I started doing dips and started doing the back arms against the uh, uh, counter along with the rest of the weights. Yeah. So basically, I realized that the push ups, the back arms, the pull ups, the chin ups, the dips in between the heavy weight would pack you more size. Um, your diet. I remember you saying to me, I can't lose weight, Rick. I don't know what to do. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I drink a lot of milk. You remember that? Yeah. How much milk were you drinking? Uh, probably all night, maybe every couple days, uh, uh, you know, uh, the biggest container you can get at the market. <laughs> but I mean, the thing is, is all my life, I had a 28 w inch waist Yeah. and I could eat three meals a day and then passed probably 40 the system slows down right so it just it just doesn't burn off because no matter what I did I really ate the same as I always did but uh, uh, and, and I and I ended up exercising a lot more when I got older I do an hour on the walking I was running at the park uh, and no matter what I ate I stayed at actually about 267 yeah and uh, just uh, 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 couldn't lose anything and then then uh, Actually, one day I was really stuffed. It was December 17th before Christmas. We'd gone to one of the Hilton buffets, drank orange juice, and I thought, God, I feel like a pig. Never in my life have I ever tried to diet. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do the common sense diet. I'll only drink water from now on. I'll eat salad, chicken, fish, meat, and that's it. And I yeah. did that for a year and uh, dropped, down to, I dr dropped down in a couple months to 230. Like it was nothing. Yeah, real quick. Quit, I was drinking sodas at dinner, so I quit the bread, the pasta, the rice, anything that I ate that would would fatten yeah. you up. Yeah. And it and the weight just fell off. And then after the spine surgery, uh, I dropped another ten pounds. And that so, was how long ago? Uh, that was actually eight months. Come the twenty six. Okay. Your training program when you work out is not like the conventional training program that a normal bodybuilder uses that goes to the gym. I see you. Over on the other side with dumbbells doing things over here, a wall and over here, and, and it's your, your own routine. Basically, yeah. I mean, I shortened it down where, you know, I get in and out as quick as possible. Yeah. So I had a routine where I would do dips that would hit the back arms, hit the shoulders, hit the lower chest. Yeah. And I would set the curl bar on the sit up, uh, the freestanding sit up. And I would do 25 curls. I'd sit in the in the uh, sit up and I'd do 50 sit-ups yeah. and I'd jump up and do 50 dips. Yeah, and I'd go around that by the time I was done With the dips I could start the sit-ups again in the curl you rested in between right right so I could go through that in about Maybe 15 minutes and this works for you. Yeah I've done that uh, and then every other day and then on another day I would do the bench and the incline and the hammers. Okay, your bench and incline are very very heavy, right? Very what's the heaviest? Most I ever hit was 615 
Never used chemicals, never used steroids. I know you never take it. I had a friend, uh, it was about four foot eight or something, and he hit 635. Yeah. And I tried to hit 655 and I missed it. And the most I ever hit was uh, 615. Who, six, was, that, who six, was that guy? It was a little guy named Bam Bam. And that's a uh, little blonde guy. He was never, never used chemicals or anything. He yeah. was a, he was a friend of mine from when I was a kid and I was younger, getting into trouble and stuff and uh, 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 youth authority camps and stuff like that. And he was just, uh, but uh, you know what? Everyone when w they would exercise in there was was strong. That's all yeah. he did was exercise. That's all you did. The, uh, actually, you know what we used to do is I used to lay down with the forty five pound bar at three fifteen the 345s on each side and yeah. we would do suicide back arms with that yeah but the only trouble is what happens over the years is the muscles get stronger than the tendons exactly and the bones. so it's like too much engine for a car yeah so what would happen is in the middle of the night my hands would go numb I'd roll over and watch my hands and I would have to massage them so the numbness went away the elbows really hurt and there was no need to hit you know anything that heavy anymore mm -hmm. I mean even though you got used to that kind of stuff and it was uh, you know the Venice Beach I used to go down with sure. uh, a friend of mine named Steve Valdez and uh, another friend named Danny Trejo who oh, before yeah, he sure. started doing the movies sure and he had actually uh, told us down there that uh, that he went to see a friend on the film runaway train that he was helping mm -hmm. get off cocaine and the guys like wanted him to do a boxing scene the director said, I saw you fight, you were a Gold Glove champion in, in Youth Authority. And he's like, I haven't done that in years. And he goes, no, 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 it's play acting. So that was kind of the start. But we'd go down to Venice Beach yeah. and all, you know, put four, 455 on the incline. Oh, no, don't spot me. Did I mess my hair up? You know, we'd be goofing yeah, around. Those were before the days it was even popular. Right. Yeah. And it was just a little chain link thing. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I'd always tease everyone else that used chemicals. And any time that, uh, 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 that I was exercised and I was completely sober. The only time that I wouldn't exercise is if I started drinking and yeah. having the addictive personality. Right. I wouldn't even look at a weight. And, how, and for how long a time would that go on? It would go on and off. Uh, for years, I'd, I'd clean up for a couple of years, and then I'd party again. And the thing is, is the secret to the muscle memory is the coming back. Yeah. A lot of people don't do that. They'll exercise all their life, or they'll stop because of an injury and come right. back. But the thing is, is from hitting it really hard, and then all of a sudden doing nothing for a few months, sobering up again, not drinking and exercising again, you get big and strong as you were really quick and then you get bigger and stronger. Right. So each time I would come back, I would come back and have 18s, I'd come back and have 19s, I'd come back and have 21s, 22s and a half. And everyone would say, I know you use something. And I'd go, nope. No, I've never known you to use anything. No, no, nothing. And the thing is, is when I'm exercising and I was sober, I'm on the NA and AA program. So right. I don't use anything anyway. I have yeah. a lot of friends that exercise and do use stuff and I tell them you're not really actually sober. Thank God willing, at November 26, I'll have 17 years. Yeah. But uh, and you know what you keep the strength and you get and, and when I get thin you know the, there's always a myth well muscle turn to fat you, no way. water doesn't turn to wine exactly right I mean if you, somebody keeps eating and they get fat and they don't exercise they get fat but you know it, I would drop down I remember I went one time to donate blood in between the exercise and there were times where I had 22 and a half inch arms I go in and I drop down I went to get on the scale and this nurse told me if you don't weigh over 145 pounds. Um, we're not going to let you donate blood. And I'm like, cut it out. And I'm trying to like push the scale. I was literally 145 pounds. Seriously? Yep. I, I would get that thin uh, in a matter of a couple of months, basically from not eating, drinking, partying. Yeah. You know, I'd have a good bill. I'd look like a swimmer or a yeah. boxer. Yeah. And then I'd gain, gain the weight again. And then as the years got older, I was never over 200 for years and years. And then past the 30s. 205, 225, 250, and I was like, God, 267. I yeah, think it was the I remember that. I remember. I, and I had never realized, you know, because you stay big up here and healthy, and I'd be doing dips and, and running and all the other stuff, but I never realized that I was like with the gut, and I'm like, God, that looks terrible. No, you know what? You never really had a gut. You told me you had a gut, but you didn't have a gut. I felt like it. You, well, you th I go to Hawaii a lot, and yeah. the thing is, you're always in your bathing suit there, yeah. and and you know, the wife and kids would be like. God damn, what's wrong? You know, <laughs> you look like a beach whale. But, uh, but you were huge. You were it huge. feels better now. Now I play a lot of tennis. Yeah. I mean, believe it or not. I mean, I used to play when I was a kid, and I play with my daughter all the time. So I'm hooked on the tennis, and 
I still do the dips. Yeah. You know, I don't do the massive heavy iron anymore. Or I not see, right I now. I saw the other day over some side of the gym doing curls and some triceps together. Yeah. Some dumbbells. Yeah, I'll still do dumbbells and back, but I'll do like twenties. Yeah. And I'll do I'll do fifty in each arm. Right. So still the routine is even if the weight's not heavier, you're doing enough where it really, really hurts. That's what Rich says too. Right. The high rep pump. Right. And then the little push against the um Oh, the curling pad, you would you'd do these right. things for your try. You could do them on the kitchen counter or Anywhere. Whatever. Yeah, 10 sets of 50 of those in a matter of a few minutes, and it'll, I mean, it hits Absolutely. you good. I do it when I finish. I do it against a, a squat rack bar. Uh, yeah, for tries, yeah. close grip, and it definitely it works the whole upper body. And it actually, even if you do it in between another exercise, you come back stronger because you come back fresh at the other exercise. Right. So it's it's like shifting the blood. I, I've never been able to just stand there and do the same thing, and wait for a couple minutes and go back and do the same thing. You always switch it off with some something else, right. and then you always come back fresh. And plus, you're doing five times the work in less a time period of time. That's pretty true. You're cramming it into right. half hour. So even if I went to stand and do dips and do 10 sets of dips and I did nothing else mm -hmm. I would wear out on the dips a lot faster if I it sounds crazy but it's true if you just get up there and you're doing dips you'd wear out a lot faster than get down do hammers do curls do something and then come back at dips and you always start back fresh again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's kind of the secret to it did too. you do anything for legs the most I've ever done really for legs is is the tennis or the running. That's it. I've never yeah, I've never really been a fan on putting anything or compressing anything on the spine, the spine. or or sitting down. I've never uh But you don't have skinny legs. No, no. They you know, they they seem to kind of work with I think you do a certain amount with whatever you're doing anything, any of yeah. the push and yeah. any of the pull stuff, but never really you know, mainly running, you know, I, I was an all-state wrestler, so I, you know, uh, uh, back in high school, wrestler, football, track, yeah. running, and I've always been really, really fast and agile as well, which right. people don't. So I've never really wanted the puffy look, you know, over. Right. I've always kind of wanted the, even though I, I blew it out a little bit, upper body, but always wanted kind of the Charles Bronson look. Yeah, that's or the look like the Conan, where it looks like you're physically fit because you do something, not because you're like blown up by, because to me, seeing that not not putting the sport down or anything but everyone almost looks the same yeah someone really. might have a vein somewhere else and and there's more of an extensive look that if somebody's really lean and they've got like really mean back arms or biceps it's it seems like it's more of a dangerous look you're like it complements each other exactly you're like wow that looks that guy looks really weird. like the old william smith yeah and you're not sure what he does right right so it's uh, i mean i love that when i was a kid and i saw rich man poor man uh but and saw so. yeah, and saw him in that. I thought, man, he looks great. He did look good. And it was funny. We were, I, you know, I painted for science fiction films and stuff for years and years. And I years back, I was in a, a, a science fiction convention. I was seeing some friends of mine, and a lady came over and and uh, she said, my husband wants to shake your hand. And I'm like, cut it out. She goes, no, no. I go, really? I was with my wife. We went over, and it was William Smith. He goes, you look great. And I said, it's your fault I look like this. <laughs> he goes, really? I said, yeah, I was a kid. You know, you see yeah. things that inspire you, uh, you know, when you're a kid. Yeah. And then it was funny. I was showing my daughter the series. I was watching part of it the other night. And I go, look, look at this guy. This is why I started exercising. She goes, he doesn't look like anything compared to you. I said, come on, man. I said, but, you know, that's, he was in really, you back, know. Back in the day, right. you know, we we're younger and he looked bigger than right, right. That's He's, the way Bronson you know, was, too. Right, and he looked good. He looked like he was physically fit, not like he was an action man dog. Exactly. You know, that's the, the same thing about the monsters and a lot of the stuff they do in the films now. And they've got no neck on him, and they've got no, you know, big head, you yeah. know, small head, and this and that, and it doesn't look menacing as opposed to something that would be thin and muscular and more snaky yeah. and attack-like is more menacing. Right, right to me but and uh, you this is what you do you build creatures for the movies and you do special effects paint monsters killer clowns from outer space painted all the bodies for army of darkness right. all that stuff is mine yeah. all the skeletons the witch in the pit the flying demon yeah so I, I'm known for all the creepy veiny skin I know you're a terrific artist stuff have you done it all yeah, I love that kind of stuff. And I'm you're like going to put kid. my little finger in a new site for me. Yes, <laughs> I remember when you called me and said you'd cut off your finger. And I exactly. said, Why don't you get it sewn on? You go, I want to display it. I want to wear it around my neck. <laughs> what did I say? Put it in a test tube with a gold uh, chain. Yeah, with a gold hook in it. And that way you could chain it and wear it. and Be like an uh, uh, ornament. Right. Well, you know, it's, it's back down to basics. Less is more. You're doing less, you get more out of it. 
Yeah. I have a book out called Bodybuilding for Dumbbells, and people said, how do you train? So I wrote this 24-page booklet, and it just talks about the old school training and how we just did a few things here and a few things there and made good gains. It wasn't all this elaborate stuff we do today. And it works. And it's, it's, a, it's right. a cute little book. It has little illustrations and pictures and all that. So I always believe going back to basics. And that's why I brought you on here, because I know that what you did worked for you. And it could work for anybody out there as well if they want to try it. I mean, when people exercise physically, everyone's different, and they know what hits them better. Some people are stronger in the arms, some people are stronger in the yeah. chest, and you kind of, you don't really want to waste your whole day unless you're in there trying to get a girlfriend or a boyfriend or anything like that. You you want to go in there, get what you want to get, and get out and exactly. get on with your life. And a lot of times you'll see people, for me, I don't say anything to them, but you see there and they're doing wrist curls and stuff and you're thinking, why are they wasting your time? You gotta go through your wrist to get into anything else anyway. That's so you're true. already getting stuff. So really if you you know, you do basically what's comfortable for you and what you start feeling good with. If right. you do too much or you do too much stuff where you can tend to get hurt, that's another thing. When you get older you wanna kinda keep it pretty narrow and pr be pretty careful. Right. You know, as we get older, I find right. I'll do something different or add something else in, and I'm like, oh man. It doesn't feel good. Right, and and basically anytime you get hurt, no matter what, it's at least 90 days before it goes away. Always. So it's, I mean, I was in, in I have a house in Maui in the mountains, 10 foot wave comes in, I tell my daughter, watch this, and I'm like crazy swimming, um, body surfing, catch this wave, and I get off, my neck's pinching a little, all the way down my arms, pinching in my elbow, down on my hand, and a friend of mine tells me, no matter what they did, it took 90 days to go away. He said, you pulled the casing on the nerve, like a casing on a wire and stuff. So, And most of the damage I've ever done to myself, it's my own muscle going against me. There was I w worked in psych hospitals for years on the side of the artwork, and very dangerous to work. There's a guy standing there, he's, the doctor's releasing him, I look over and the doctor's laying on the ground, I think I'm seeing things. Well, this monster had hit this guy. So I pull this guy down, I pull him in, strap him down. He's hearing voices, thinking people are out to get him. I put him in, from the wrestling, I put him in a guillotine to hold him, because he's fighting so they can strap him down. He's like out of his mind, he thinks demons are getting him. <laughs> and what I did was I tied up his leg and I, and I pulled back on the head and I pulled back like this, on my own leg and I feel pop 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 on the inside of my leg black and blue for a couple months so most of the damage I've ever done that most of people will do is you do to yourself always against your own muscle so I mean that's one thing is no matter what I suggest anybody do is do what you can do don't don't ever do too much or too heavy you're better off doing more reps of something right you know rather than well I'll pile this on do five more reps let it burn a little bit more rather than packing on more weight yeah. the more weight if you're not if they're not gonna pay you or you're not gonna go into competition or anything like that I mean don't you got pads in between your bones they gotta last for the rest of your life don't yeah. be crazy I had a guy come up to me at the gym when they started that ultimate fighting thing and he tells me Dave get into this come on you used to wrestle and I knew him as a kid I, I, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's, I didn't want to mention his name without asking him, but I, I tell him, uh, where, is there any money in this? No, no. And I said, you gotta be, and I go to pat him on the back. He said, oh, no, no. Oh. And I'm like, well, why are you doing it? Well, the glory of it and this and that. I said, you gotta be kidding. You're all busted up. Why are you gonna, you know, and he said, no, no, you gotta be, you know, come on. I said, well, I was just being nice. I said, let me think about it. And I go to shake his hand, hug him. Oh, no, no, this hand. And I'm like shaking his little <laughs> finger and I'm thinking, why? So the bottom line yeah. is you, you do the exercising to enhance yourself and enhance your life, not to put yourself in the ground. Exactly. Basically. So. Well, I really appreciate you coming by. I know you got places to go and things to do, but I wanted the public to meet you, the mystery man, Dave Half, who's my good friend, and he comes to the gym and he trains hard, and he's a very talented individual and very artistic, and uh, as you can see, he's very well spoken, has a lot to say. So take it and use it. I think it's a great idea, don't you? Yes. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, now I can go have my protein. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go play tennis. Okay, you wouldn't okay. think I'd play tennis, though, but my kid, she's really mean with tennis. Now I do tennis. <laughs> All right. It's a good round. Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code Grayson12 on the link below at OldSchoolLabs.com. Hey, everyone. Now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Grayson personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it and I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrazen.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away.
and be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.